let's have a little chat about wire. And why is wire so important? Now, I'll be the first to admit, I didn't quite understand all this when I first started, even though with all my electrical background that I have, being a power lineman, a journeyman in that, doing home electrician work, being an Oric certified fiber splicer, all the other stuff I've done, cable guy, built cell towers, all that kind of stuff. I never got to learn about the specifications, so when I came out I built an amp that didn't have Teflon wire in it. And I got drug up on the cross for it and got crucified. And uh, ever since then, I've used Teflon and everything. I ended up buying that amp back, completely rewrapped it with Teflon and resold it. Bought it back, actually replaced it with another amplifier for the guy. Did what I say would be a product recall on one box. So anyhow, as I'm working away, I happen to notice that this one particular thing I'm working on didn't have Teflon wire in everything inside the amp except for the input and output transformer. So now let's talk about the environment that the wire is going to be working in, especially in a mobile application. So let's say it's a hot July day. It's a hot 4th of July. Everybody's out shooting skip or talking on the radio. It's 110 degrees or 105 degrees out. Inside the car it's 120 or the compartment of the car, the back of the truck or in the tough box of the vehicle or underneath the seat it's 120 degrees and air condition is running and the amp is already at itself resting temperatures at about 110 115 degrees when you go to start talking on it the box is going to get hot and it's going to have radiated heat that's going to go out through the board throughout the entire cabinet now you have to think about the wire that's inside the box and if it's pinned down to the board or if it's going to be rubbing up against another component what exactly happens to the wire the insulation is going to get soft if it's not Teflon or TFE coated wire. So I grabbed this piece of wire out of the amp because I went ahead because I want to be able to sleep at night and grabbed this wire. Now I don't know if you can see this or not how well this is going to come out but printed on the side of the wire is a part number and all of its ratings. Now it's very clearly stated on here its part number is the E25635 and it's made by uh, uh, Allied, which is a UL appliance wire. This is appliance wire. This is something that you put in like your dryer or uh, your HVC system. This is appliance wire, okay? It gives it gauge its size. Now it's got one UL rating of 80C and another UL rating of 105. This wire is printed and stamped that says 80C on it, which stands for 80 Celsius. So when we look this up and we Google it, we Google E25635 wire, AL appliance, 534 four, five, wall sickness. Okay, so we Google that. And when we get down here, we'll find that it is made by a company called Alpha Wire. This is their data sheet, okay? It's a one-to-one -one hookup appliance wire, 22 gauge. It's all its wall thicknesses, it's all the different colors it comes in applicable specifications otherwise what is the environment that you can operate it in under rider laboratories that's what you all stands for when you flip your phone over or you look at a power plug or everything gets sent to an independent lab where they break it down and they literally break it and then they tell you all the different specifications of what it's able to operate in UL is the most expensive underwriting laboratory that you got that's the standard that's what everybody goes to the CSA International that is a cheaper company that you like if you go to China Freight you'll see that it is CSA underwrited okay so a lot of companies out of China use this it's still in the ballpark of the same standard as the underwrite laboratories so now that we know about that we can go over here and we can see the wire style okay ADC at 300 volts right here or 105 at 300 volts. So when we do our Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion with Google, 80 Celsius works out to be 176 degrees. Now what they mean by that is this is its maximum usable temperature to where the, the insulation will maintain its ability to insulate itself from other wires or other voltages 
that are next to it without the jacket becoming so soft that the wire can wander through the insulation. Otherwise, push it out of the way or move it or it's gonna, the insulation is going to break down. Anything over this degrees of temperature ain't guaranteed nothing. Okay. So, I go out in this world and I start building boxes. And I find out that I need to use Teflon wire. And we're all familiar with this name, aren't we? Yeah, they're the ones that make all of our coax connectors and stuff. I use 16 gauge wire. It's about the smallest wire I use. It's TFE Teflon wrapped jacket. Okay. When we go down here, we start looking at our specifications. Operating temperature range. Negative 65 degrees C to 200 plus Celsius. Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion once again. 200 Celsius on the input, even though it says 200 plus, is 392 degrees. 176, 392 degrees plus. So hotter than what your oven can get to. You're gonna figure that in the plus rating, you gotta think that it's gonna be within 15 to 20%. So we're thinking in the 425 to 450 degree temperature is gonna be our maximum safe using temperature. Safe using temperature. Not its overall maximum temperature, just maximum safe. That's what the underwrite laboratories for Belden say. Okay, now that we've learned about wire a little bit, let's go see how that actually works in real life. Just give me just one second. Okay, so now what I've done here is I've gotten a piece of the wire that came out of the amp that I was working on. I cut it, and then a piece of, uh, piece of wire that I use, the TEF Teflon wrapped coated wire. The fact that you can print to the wire tells you immediately that it is not Teflon. Nothing sticks to that. Yeah, like when I built Vader, I had to use heat shrink tubing and put that on the wire, and then I could put my label to the wire. Otherwise, the label would just fall off. Nothing sticks to Teflon. Nothing. So now what I've got here is a little butane torch set on the lowest setting that I can get it to do. And we're going to see that our exhaust temperature coming off of our flame, our flame is going to be about, 100 and, well, about 130 degrees at its max. You've seen it there for a second. And our exhaust plume is going to be in the hundreds of degree, about 100 degrees. So first we're going to move this wire, or this underneath our Teflon wire. And we can very clearly see on the FLIR that the wire is heating up. And it's not burning. It's not deforming. Let's change our perspective. See if we're not dead straight on. Okay, the wire's not burning, it's not melting down, but it has taken the full brunt of the temperature, 200, 260 degrees. Focus. Come on, focus. Now, if we move that over to the, uh, the non-Teflon wire, Move that over to the non-Teflon wire to where it's straight underneath it. Enough said, right? Exact same experiment. Same position, same height. In the 230, 240 degree temperature range. Now what you have to be worried about is not necessarily a direct flame hitting it, it's a hot soldering iron or a hot piece of wire that somebody's used as a tie to hold it down. So we're going to look at the tip of my soldering iron here. About 173 degrees, 178 degrees, 180 degrees. We're just going to touch this wire. Just touch it. It easily creates a bare spot. 
where if this is inside your amp and it's rubbing up against something hot that's about 170 degrees, the insulation breaks down, then you have bare wire exposed. Or the same experiment on the Teflon wire shows you this. Once again, Now let's say your builder decides he's going to tack the wire down to the board by using a little piece of solid wire like this. Now, one, the wire is always going to be rubbing as it's flexing. And over time, with the Teflon, most likely this wire will wear out and break before it breaks through and causes a ground issue. We're now with this and the rubberized wire you can feel the friction that's there. That and when they tack this down to the board to solder the wire down in place, this wire is going to get up to 180 degrees and it's going to cause little nicks in the insulation like, let's see here, here. A little tiny nick. Now that wire's lost half of its ability to insulate itself. Now let's say you've got 12 volt worth of current or 12 volt worth of voltage hooked up on the inside of your amplifier which we all know most of these guys don't fuse anything so it's got an infinite amount of uh, current behind it so you get a little tiny nick and it's rubbing back and forth the box gets up to about 160 170 degrees this wire starts to get soft it's already lost half of its ability to insulate itself just from being installed This shorts out, and when this melts down, it turns into about as hot of a, a lead as what you've got on the inside of your toaster. It gets nuclear fire hot. Well, we all know that we clump wires together. So this one melts to that wire, that wire melts to the next, and the next thing you know, you got a fire. Because everything's going up in smoke. Guys, please make sure that your builder is using all Teflon wire inside your amplifier. If not, it's a fire hazard. I say this from personal experience. I corrected how I've done business, and I make sure that everything that leaves here has got all Teflon wire in it, just because I want to be able to guarantee my customer that once the thing leaves here, they don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Just saying. Well, guys, I just thought I'd do a little class on this since I've had um, up five, six of these products come through here that did not have Teflon wire in them at this point. This is something new that has started happening within this last year. Um, and I'm not going to point any fingers. I'm not going to poke anybody in the eye. I'm not going to do that. That's not the way I work here at BBI. I think you all know that. I just fix the problem and I move on to the next thing. So I'm putting this out there into the electronic ether that if you are building amplifiers, please, please, for the love of God and for the safety of your customers, the safety of their vehicles, and the safety of their equipment, use Teflon wire. You guys have a good day. I'll be back with you later. BBI, y'all.